So, welcome back everybody after a short break with the next track, this time with Olivia Jan telling us something about, or telling us um, about time to say goodbye to your Nagios space setup. Enjoy! Uh, bonjour à tous. This, wi this will be my last words in French, so <laughs> be easy on it. Um, effectively, it's uh, one more talk to see if we can squash Negios from our setup and if we can do monitoring without Negios. Uh, it's a question uh, that can be asked nowadays. Um, no, you know I'm French, but uh, I'm first a system admin, an architect. Uh, I'm also the co-founder of the French uh, monitoring uh, community. Uh, I've written a book about Negios, so I have no hate for Negios. <laughs> and uh, I'm also uh, the co-founder of uh, um, a company with its, uh, which is doing uh, monitoring in in the cloud, yeah, if I can say that. A uh, bit like Pingdom or something like that. Uh, the company is called Check My Website. And uh, I must confess, this is not open source, but uh, software as a service. Now, let's talk about the content. Uh, why switch off? Is it a question that can be asked? And why would you like to switch off from Nagios? Such a switch. Ew. What is it? Okay, back. So it's a good question. Why switch off? There are good reasons, of course. There are maybe not so good reasons, more partial, more opinionated. Uh, but it's a question. Which way to take? If you, if you think it's time to quit, to quit Nagios, which way to take? Um, after those two questions, I will uh, review tools uh, in the community for building a solution without Nagios. And I will present a personal work I've done uh, with such a tools, with some of them. Uh, a work I've done for the French community. It was about uh, rebooting our website uh, on monitoring of other websites. And I will finish uh, for those who will not be convinced uh, with a slide for migrating from Nagios to a kind of solution I will present now. So, some reason. The Godfather, Nagios, is for me uh, dead as an open source project. The community is low, the development is low, Nagios 4 is in fact uh, named on one. So, we have seen strange things of those days in the community, in the Negios community, about plugin, about... Okay, let's forget all this stuff. Um, I, can do bet I can do better with a Negios based setup. I've used it for uh, maybe 10 years uh, in various clients in France, and I know I have some... Um, problem now that can be solved with Negios, because it's in the concept of Negios. So I have to change if I want to go further. A really good reason there in the community, in open source, there are always new cool things, new cool toys, and I like new toys. Better cloud support. If you are trying to use Negios in a cloud-based infrastructure, you will see the limit. I would like to have clear state metrics, message monitoring, not a plugin that goes for a check, a state, a message, and a metric. I want to separate all that. Of course, better charting solution. Uh, of course. Um, the next pass for me is going to near real-time monitoring. So it can be done with Negios. I want also to add some uh, routing, aggregation, correlation, call it whatever you want. Uh, it's maybe some magic or some intelligence to add to the solution. And of course, your reason. They are the best. Is there anybody 
who has reason to tell me why you want to switch off. Nobody want to switch off. Okay, this is the end. The big question, if you want to switch, if you want to leave Negios, you know, it's like an old wife you have been living off for 10 years. It's not easy to leave. You have basically two routes to take, two roads. You can continue on the same logic as Negios. And these are the, what I call the four musketeers, I'm French. Neymon, Andreas has talked about uh, this morning, which is, in fact, uh, the real Negios four core. Uh, Isinga 2, Shinkan, and Sanjay. Uh, Shinkan is a French project that has begun as a proof of concept for scaling Negios. Uh, it's a true monitoring cluster solution. Uh, Centreon is something you maybe don't know, but it has begun 10 years ago as a PHP uh, uh, user interface for Negios. And now they are taking the same road as Isinga with a complete rewrite of Negios. But it's still in the same logic. You pull your host and services with checks. So far, so good. I wanted something else. I wanted to rethink uh, all the monitoring I've done. Uh, this is something we, 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 saw, uh, we see regularly in community, uh, people who are, who are writing uh, articles about what can be wrong, monitoring sucks, etc., etc. I wanted to be in that trend and to rethink uh, monitoring around four things, four easy things, collecting, storing, visualization, visualization, and alerting. There are some words in English that are not easy to pronounce for French people. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay, let's see the tools, what we have on the market. We are in the open source world, though everything is free. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, something I want also is to make monitoring on all the level not as um, in the traditional sense uh, as Negios, we do network mon monitoring, we do system monitoring as well, etc. But I wanted to uh, really have uh, specific checks, specific things for the application level, able, for example, to push metrics from directly from the code. And for the network level, I wanted to see inside the flow, not just how much packet are passing in and out. I wanted to see more deeply what's going on in this flow. Uh, so this is uh, tools for collecting. You have packet bit, which I will talk later, so no problem. All the uh, syslog family for uh, taking messages from the log. Chris said, uh, this morning that there were a lot of things in the log. I agree with that. The truth is in the log, in fact. Some tools for uh, doing some network analysis. You get a uh, standard, which is called S-Flow, and you get tools on this, S-Flow toolkit for routers, bridges, etc. And you got also a host S-Flow that can analyze um, the network packets for a host, for a Linux host. Logstash forwarder is a part of the uh, Logstash Elastic Search Kibana stack. It's a, a SYN client because Logstash is too big to put on your production server. So they have created a Logstash forwarder, which is a SYN client written in Go. It is quite comparable to something like that. Uh, I mentioned an X-log because it's one of the um, syslog compatible uh, software which can run both on Linux as well as Windows. So if you have Windows log to forward to a central monitoring system, you can use an X-log on your Windows host and it will forward Windows log events in a syslog formatted fashion. So good. Uh, and for metrics, 
for metrics, Collector D, which is definitely one of my favorite monitoring tools. Uh, for those, again, who have uh, Windows servers, you get a slight variation of Collector D, something that works quite similarly, which is Diamond, written in Python, so it can work both in Linux and Windows. Collector D has a Windows agent, but it's not free. And uh, last one is a new one I've, uh, I've found the uh, last days, uh, which is called OS Query. It's a Facebook open source project, which is um, which can be compared to double MI on Windows. In fact, it's a SQL-powered operating system, instrumentation, and analytics. So it's really interesting because you have a structured way to gather facts and metrics on your Linux host. Quite interesting. I haven't tested really uh, this one yet. This is uh, for collecting metrics and messages. I speak about messages, I will tell you uh, after why I speak about messages and not events. Uh, one thing is left uh, sometimes in monitoring tools, it's the external point of view of your uh, infrastructure. When you do uh, monitoring with Negios tools, you're inside your firewall often, you're inside your enterprise. So what you see, is not what your end users see. You can have a full stack that you see green on Negios, the MySQL server database is working, the uh, Apache is working, the system is working, and the services, the website is not working. So external tools are cool to get a end user perspective of the service you want to monitor. It's interesting to do those kind of control closest to your end user location, of course. And it can also be used for application behavior. So you test uh, the way your application must behave. And if it not behave as it should, you can raise an alert. And it's also interesting for real user monitoring. You know, a piece of JavaScript that you put in your code. And every time someone gets on your website, you collect uh, metrics, performance metrics, business metrics, everything you want. This is the external collecting for me. Uh, the tools. One, one can be used, web patch test is uh, an online service, but you can also operate a private instance of wave, of wave bash test. Sorry, Selenium is well known in the community. Those three are maybe not so well known. Phantomas uh, GS um, is used to um, drive a browser, like an end user would drive his browser. Uh, it's much more lighter than Selenium. It's doing quite the same. Boomerang and Bucky are two um, uh, software for doing real user monitoring. In fact, uh, Boomerang is a Yahoo project, and uh, they all f operates at the same level. In fact, you have a JavaScript code in your website pages. And uh, Boomerang and Bucky are weighting those metrics and uh, can root also those metrics. It's interesting. Uh, what about um, routing? I call that routing, but you can call it correlation. You can call it whatever you want. It's uh, the possibility for one measure to um, to go to various places for alerting, for metrics, for message, for console, for everything you want. For messages, there are three products that are quite the same. Logstash, who was the first maybe of, in this category, and now you have also Flume and FluentD, which just uh, quite the same as Logstash. Input, filters, codec, output. Uh, Chris has shown us uh, this morning the 
impressive uh, plugin list of Logstash. It gives you an idea of uh, all the routes you can do with that. StatD is a small daemon um, for aggregating, collecting metrics, and flushing them at a regular interval to graphite or something else. So you can have uh, your application code transmitting each time uh, for an e-commerce website, you can have your application code uh, giving each time there's a transaction, you can push that, take one, add one to this counter. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a kind of aggregation metrics tool. And Carbon Relay NG is a um, tool to uh, route your metrics in various backends like Graphite or InfluxDB. The tools, database, we have seen the collecting, uh, the routing, and now the database, uh, there are strong, strong, strong uh, movement, uh, started three, four years ago maybe, in open source for um, highly specialized databases. For monitoring, we need databases for metrics, which is something really specialized. It's not a relational database. And we need also a specialized database for a full text search in messages or log, etc. Graphite is the most used uh, of those databases. It's not only a database, in fact, but it has a database part, not the best one, I think. But OK, OpenTSDB and KerosDB are quite the same project. Uh, I think KerosDB has started as a fork to, of OpenTSDB to put it on Cassandra for uh, storage and not HBs uh, like uh, OpenTSDB. InfluxDB seems to be the holy grail for monitoring because it stores metrics and events. It's a young project, but maybe the most promising. Certainly the most promising. Elasticsearch is not really a database, but an index database, an indexing database. You give it uh, data to hit, and it will permit to query those data in uh, uh, in flat manner, I think. No, no structure, no schema, no, no, not all the classical stuff of a database. And of course, visualization is also important. Maybe not for the most technical of us, but uh, for uh, the direction, for the business, for they like dashboards. So we give them dashboards. And um, there are two tools today that are emerging, Kibana and Grafana. And also, not your dashboard collection. When it's underlined, you can click on the presentation to get to the website URL. So there's a database, uh, database dashboard collection that uh, a friend of mine maintained on GitHub. And I think there's a 20 or 30 dashboard interface listed there. So you get choice. <laughs> uh, this is a screenshot uh, from Grafana, I think. And Kibana, yeah. And the Kibana 4, yeah. I'm sure for this one. <laughs> OK, let's finish with the tools available for alerting. There are two projects we are working basically the same, um, Cabot and Serene. Don't know the pr pronunciation, huh? I try. Um, there are systems when you uh, query your metrics database, in fact, graph it for those tools, and you uh, alert based on that. I will come further like on that after. Boston is something really new, 
Uh, it's a Netflix uh, monitoring solution I've just discovered last week for the, for the conference, so nothing more to say. <laughs> uh, Skyline Oculus are more, not really alerting, but more correlation and so on. You, Esper is also in this field. Uh, I've tried Esper, but uh, I'm not intelligent for too much, too much, uh, too much difficult for me. These was the tools you can use. Not one time make your pronouns. <laughs> um, for the French, uh, I call a French monitoring community experience. This is the reboot of the monitoring I've done for the French monitoring community. We operate as all community websites. Uh, this experience will be based on website, but uh, 80 or 90 percent now of our applications are web-based. So, in fact, website, application, who cares? And of course, I wanted to do all I've told you before. Collect, store, visualize. Oh, nice, visualize. Alert. <laughs> this is a, a small, small uh, diagram of the monitoring FR uh, architecture. Classical one, I can say that. We have a big physical server when uh, we operate LXC containers, no docker, <laughs> we are not mature, <laughs> I'm not, and uh, traditional PHP 5, MariaDB for the uh, database server, a mem cache for Nginx in front, nothing really fancy in that. This is what I want to monitor. And I want to answer those two questions. The rest for me, I don't care. Is it working? When it's not working, what is not working? Monitoring done easy, but <laughs> collecting metrics. I told you uh, I like collect D, I like so I've used collect D because I we have no Windows servers. Collect D uh, is collecting metrics. It's uh, an active agent, if we can say that. Um, a lot of plugins, of course, easy to understand, easy to operate, easy to configure. It's really a nice software. Um, I will tell you a few words after, but I didn't choose uh, Graphite. It was the most evident choice, but uh, I wanted to test the coolest kid in this area, so I use InfluxDB. In fact, I started with Graphite and uh, when InfluxDB has become quite mature, I wanted to have this kind of uh, specialized metrics database. So CollectD um, will have an InfluxDB plugin. It's, uh, it's a work in progress, but for now we don't have it. So I'm using a small program, small software called uh, CollectD InfluxDB proxy. In fact, it's something that uh, uses the classical uh, network protocol of CollectD, UDP, for me. Uh, why UDP? Because I collect metrics every five seconds, and uh, it's a community project, so I don't care if I lose uh, one or two time series. It's even better than one uh, check every five minutes. It's still better than one checks every five minutes. Uh, what I collect with CollectD, uh, of course, the uh, classical stuff, system, CPU, memory, mm -hmm. but also um, PHP 5 FPM via the PHP 5 uh, statue URL of FPM. I also collect Nginx metrics via the statue of Nginx. I also collect MariaDB metrics. All those things are uh, 
made easy with Collect2D. You have just a plugin to configure, and that's all. This is for collecting metrics. I also collect messages. And uh, I, I didn't want it to put an agent, uh, syslog uh, message agent on my OS. So I decided to stick to stick with rsyslog, which is in uh, default in Ubuntu and other distro, I think, also. Uh, CentOS also, I think, yeah. Um, What I do with um, rsyslog and then logstash at the other side, this is what I do. I format engine's access to be read by rsyslog. And with this rsyslog configuration, I format all the messages in a JSON uh, uh, field, if I can say that, to send it to logstash. Uh, this way, Logstash has nearly nothing to do on the other side. Everything is prepared, and what you see is something really important, that's all messages get structured. When you see here uh, host, I will be able to find messages by host. You find program name, I will be able to find logs relative to a program name. See, it's really structured, kind of structure. <laughs> so the circuit, RCS log, everything you can have here, MySQL log access, you can have all the flat file, all the log flag file you want, they will be uh, pushed into log stash from RCS log. You can use, of course, a lot of different uh, possibilities in this setup. I told you that uh, I wanted to have better insight of my network um, stuff, network traffic. So um, I tried uh, PacketBit uh, for doing so, because uh, PacketBit is first an agent you install of you on your host. It uh, analyzes, if I can say that, um, network traffi traffic. It's based on the PCAP uh, library, something like that. It's classical stuff. And a mistake. It's going to Elasticsearch, not in Logstash. Sorry for that. Packets bit, so reads, pass network protocol on the fly. Try to correlate the request with the response and measuring the response time. It's a complete solution, and it's maybe the first in this field in open source. The first I know, at least. Logstash. Logstash is uh, my uh, favorite message router uh, because uh, it's, worth, it's easy to understand. It's based on inputs. Every input you want, it can be a Twitter, uh, Twitter flow, it can be a file, it can be whatever you want. You have uh, codec filters to, to work on this data, and you have output filters. This is my situation. All that goes to Logstash, I use Elasticsearch to store those messages and to query against. This is my Logstash config. So you, you see, it's really easy. In fact, it works with that. I was uh, structuring my data for Logstash. So on Logstash, three blocks, an input on any port you want. The codec is a JSON decoder because I send JSON messages. So I use a decoder of JSON and its type of syslog. Um, this is the filter part, really a small filter at just replacing some stuff in this filter. And I'm also removing a field from the incoming message. You can do what you want with filters in Logstash. You can drop message, you can um, malax message, you can rewrite them, you 
you can do whatever you want. And my output is just as simple as an Elasticsearch output. Uh, routing metrics. You get application metrics, you get system metrics, you get all you want. I send them not uh, to a classical StatD daemon, because a StatD is now, I can say, a protocol, a standard protocol for doing so. It's available in every language. So you can have a StatD implementation in Python, in C, in JavaScript, of course, etc., etc. So. Uh, in my, in my case, I have CollectD already installed on my servers, so I use CollectD as a StatD daemon. He has the plugin for that, as simple as that. So I can use the same uh, logic, sending metrics from application and so on, sending them to CollectD behaving as a StatD uh, daemon, and the rest isn't changed. We inject CollectD metrics into InfluxDB via the CollectD InfluxDB proxy. It's uh, what I've done. There are a lot of different uh, possibilities to do so. Um, it's very easy to push metrics. It's a typical StatD uh, metrics. Just a Nico on your terminal line of uh, a value, which is called foo. Uh, add one to this value, which is a counter. So each time I make a Nico foo once pipe c, and I send it to a stat d daemon capability to a stat d daemon, I increment the counter foo by one, and then every ten, every ten seconds, every one minute, I flush the total to graphite, or in my case, InfluxDB. Now we have uh, collected them, routed them. We have now to store the metrics. And my choice, I've been uh, InfluxDB. Why? Uh, what decide me is that today, InfluxDB can be have like a graphite server. What is the interest, you can ask? You don't ask? Okay. Uh, the interest is that there are a lot of, lot of uh, collecting demons, collecting uh, software that can uh, work with graphite. Not a lot works directly with InfluxDB. So having an InfluxDB database server behave like a graphite opens a lot of possibilities. So for that, you have a Graphite API, which is just um, a rewrite of what I like the best in Graphite. It's, in fact, this API. You can um, ask for statistics about your metrics. You can, it's really a nice API. I already told about Carbon NG. Graphite InfluxDB is just that. Uh, why I choose uh, InfluxDB because of the cluster possibilities. I don't need them, frankly, for monitoring affair, but I like to use the biggest tools. Um, graphite is something, a kind of nightmare when you have to scale it. I've, I did run into problems uh, with some clients and a lot of, lot of metrics. And what is nice is given design for events and metrics. The message. Take the message where, wherever they are, <laughs> send them to Logstash. Logstash will take care of them and sending them to Elasticsearch or everything you want. Simple. We will see the visualization. Uh, what I like in Elasticsearch, cluster, 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 always cluster. It's a full text search. So you can uh, search anything in your log file. That's pretty cool. Without going to each server. Really pretty cool. Visualization. 
for PacketBit. Uh, PacketBit use a modified version of Kibana 3. So uh, you get something uh, that's coherent visually with the others, even if you have to install another tool. I think things will move forward with Kibana 4 because Kibana 4 has now a plugin uh, structure and plugin architecture. So maybe we will see PacketBit and uh, Grafana uh, moving to uh, uh, Kibana plugins. I hope so. What is really nice with PacketBit is that you have dashboard ready out of the box. Uh, this is no works for me. Really no works. Just put the agent on the server, load the dashboard, it's a JSON description in Kibana. All dashboards are JSON description. And you get that. You get uh, an insight of all your MySQL transaction, transaction. You get an insight of all your Nginx or Apache requests. You, you get really a lot of, lot of information. It's a young project, still a young project. The second tool I use for a visualization is Grafana. Uh, Grafana is for metrics. Uh, what is nice uh, with Grafana, it's built on Kibana 3, but also a modified version, so you are to have to install it. Uh, what it's really nice, it's, uh, it's m compatible with the three major metrics databases we have now, Graphite, InfluxDB, OpenTSDB. So with the same tool, you can query three uh, different storage. That can be interesting in some situation. And visualization message, <laughs> Kibana 4. Uh, I speak about Kibana 4 just because the, we are now at the beta 2. And uh, there are really some nice stuff in this version because uh, when you get into uh, freshly uh, Kibana 4 installed, and of course you have data in your Elasticsearch, uh, you will, you can interactively compose your dashboard with Kibana 4. You have uh, three modes, discover. Discover lets you dig inside your data, your messages, and you can save the query that have some interest to you. Visualize, made some pretty cool graph out of those queries. And dashboards are the mix of the two, queries and uh, graphics. All the stuff can be done in your browser. So you don't need technical people to build such a dashboard. They must know uh, a bit about what's its own message, but uh, OK. <laughs> uh, nothing to say. Uh, easy install. You have just a packet to drop on your server. It's the same for Logstash, Elasticsearch. You get Debian packet, package. You get CentOS package. So it's not a problem. In 50 minutes, you get a complete solution based on those tools uh, working. Uh, what is nice with Kibana 4, it's a uh, multiple indices, so you can uh, have a lot of different uh, data sets in your uh, unique Elasticsearch, and you can carry, you can query all those data in the same way. Kibana, Logstash, Elasticsearch are not tools uh, limited to monitoring. You can store uh, everything, in fact, in Elasticsearch. Uh, I think GitHub is using it for full text search in uh, issue messages. Okay, what I've uh, what I've done, <laughs> what I've done, I've done this solution from the ground to up. This is for events. This is for metrics. Ersys log log slash elastic sur Kibana. Collected D, collected D proxy, in FlexDB, Grafana. Um, I hope really to have here a unified layer for visualization. We are just near of that. 
for the rest, I'm happy with that. I'm really happy with this stack. But I have some wishes. I don't have uh, done any alerting for now. Uh, because this is the next slide. Uh, I want to reboot alerting. <laughs> After monitoring, it's alerting time. Uh, I don't do external monitoring because, in fact, I do. <laughs> but with uh, software as a service, because I want it uh, to check our website from various locations around the world. And doing so with open source software would have cost much more in server location than uh, using uh, Pingdom or Check My Website tools to do so. Uh, much more, because I have a small infrastructure. Uh, if you have a big infrastructure, maybe it's interesting to put some collectors, some metric collectors around the world if your website is worldwide. So uh, external monitoring, <laughs> alerting, no alerting for the moment. I only use the top level alert. Uh, when my website is down, I'm alerted. No alert for the rest. I will tell you uh, on the next slide why. I miss, I really miss a repository for dashboard like we have for uh, monitoring sucks as a um, repository for listing all the uh, monitoring programs, software, etc. I would like to see a repository for sharing dashboards because uh, there are a lot of intelligence in a good, dash in a good dashboard. So, um, this, has, this is related with the, the last things, is that now collecting is not no more a problem. We, you can collect a huge amount of data, but uh, the next step is giving sense to those metrics and messages. And that's why I believe a good dashboard does just make that. It gives sense to your metrics and messages. I told you I want to reboot alerts. <laughs> uh, why? Because uh, I don't care anymore about CPU going 100%. I don't, I don't care about that, really. Uh, I want to focus on problems that affect the users. Uh, like Chris said, uh, and I like this, uh, what is important is uh, for a, an application, is that serving users. And you have to do so as long as you don't kill your users. Um, I like also the idea of alerting not in email anymore, because nobody reads email alerts. So I prefer to send them in a chat channel. You know, uh, a lot of companies now have a, a chat channel for their IT staff. So. I think it makes sense to um, make the server participate to the conversation. When you have an alert, you send it into the chat channel, and all the staff can see the alert. So this is something I like. The main reason I don't want to alert anymore on static threshold. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, except if you like 100 emails in your mailbox all the morning. We have to make a threshold based on history, on a time window, to see if a server behaves like he was behaving last week, last day, these sort of things. And for alerting, I want also statistic function dynamic threshold, I told you, and I want anomaly detection, uh, CPU going upper 100% is not anomaly detection. But if at a time the, U, the CPU is 5% and one day it's 200%, it's something I want to know. Standard deviation is also something interesting because well, you can follow what's going on or not. If you're not convinced to switch off, 
the last slide will kill you. <laughs> you can keep your Nagios base set up and, um, or can I say that, uh, having the benefits of a real metrics storage and visualization and the benefits of a real messages central logging. Because uh, you have plugins like Graphios who can uh, inject the classical traditional perf data into uh, graphite, graphite <laughs> or InfluxDB. Check Graphite can query the Graphite API from Nagios for alert based on history, not just at the time. Logstash can send event message, a correlation of the two, to Nagios via the NSCA protocol. If, like me, you don't uh, like Unix timestamp in your log, you can use Nagios log in Kimbana with a special filter called Nagios line in Logstash, and you will have your Nagios log in a more human, readily friendly manner in a web browser, rather than to have to connect to your Nagios server and uh, having a script shell to transform the Unix temp to a human date. <laughs> so, um, the last question, maybe, I didn't spoke about state. I think Nexus is good for state, only for state. So maybe keep it for state uh, to know if your MySQL server can talk to your PHP server, for example, the inverse. Things like that. And now, if you have any question. No question? One question. <laughs> I'm waiting the microphone. <laughs> what about deleting old data? How do you manage old data which isn't year old or something like this? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, I haven't uh, faced this problem for yet <laughs> because the storage is so much cheap nowadays and I, can, I keep growing, growing, growing. And I will see. It, what I can say, it's pretty efficient. Uh, it is a pretty efficient storage. But um, I think InfluxDB will have um, implement uh, something like we have found in ARD, the fact uh, that we can have a run robin database, so the, you can fix uh, the size of your database at the beginning. I think they are going to something like that. But it's a true question. I have no answer for it for the moment. I will tell you in one year when I have full up all my disk. <laughs> but in fact, I think it could be pretty easy because um, Elasticsearch maintain uh, one, um, one file for each day. So you can easily, like a log rotation, you can easily uh, slash them from the server and keep them in archive, archive or so on. Um, you showed your very simple setup of services, and now you have this zoo of applications and databases and uh, visualization front ends to monitor this. Wouldn't it be simpler to have one tool to use? Uh, <laughs> I let you respond to that. No, it's a troll question. <laughs> uh, I like, I, I like, but it's it's my uh, opinion. I like. Uh, Unix uh, way of doing things, uh, to have just uh, one thing to do one thing and to speak with another tool doing one thing. I like this philosophy. I don't like the one application would do all. I don't like that. But it's personal opinion. So this stack fits me well. I didn't tell that it will fit all. <laughs> Hi, thank you for the presentation. Um, do you have any experience uh, on InfluxDB production setups in terms of sizes, number of metrics? Uh, I can say this is a, an experience in production because all I told you is in production, in fact, for monitoring affair. But it's a small production, so it's 
it's maybe a bit early to to see how uh, InfluxDB will behave on uh, big big data, but it's uh, it's done for that. So I'm pretty confident with that, but we'll see. And uh, uh, provoking question: um, <laughs> Why I like you could you could I mean looking at the Elasticsearch. You could also use, instead of InfluxDB, throw all the mo metrics into Elasticsearch, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is something I, w I would like to, to do, having just one database, not two for metrics and events. But it's too early because uh, even since inf in InfluxDB are not, uh, uh, there are not so much tools to do so, uh, Elasticsearch is really, really, really cool toy, so... For now, I, I keep with the two, but mm. having just one will be uh, the graal, yeah, yeah. And if it's one, I don't know the one, because you can also store metrics in Elasticsearch. Mm. This is a bit schizophrenic sometimes, uh, this kind of solution, yeah. But it's also a work in progress. Uh, all these tools were not existing uh, three or four years ago, so they are quite young. Uh, InfluxDB is in... Uh, 0.8, something like that. Uh, Logstash has just passed the one version this year. Uh, Elasticsearch as well. So they are, they are young tools. They are young tools. Thank you. There's one more here, I think. Merci pour la présentation exceptionnelle. Merci. <laughs> <Excuse my French. laughs> um, very interesting concept. Uh, is there any further information on your website or even maybe a kind of a sandbox where you can get hands on and look at uh, the stuff yes, you made? Yes, if you read French, <laughs> yeah. yes, if you read French uh, on the Check My Website uh, blog, uh, this is uh, where I write all the stuff I found when I. Uh, when I explore those kind of solutions. So, yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Um, you said you're no longer interested in stuff like, for example, CPU usage or whatever. What you're interested well, alerting, in? Alerting. Alerting. Yeah, on that. alerting on that. Yeah, what you're interested yeah, in, I'm you said, is always the. Always interested in CPU. <laughs> yeah, sure. But what you're interested in alerting is alerts for uh, stuff that the end user sees, which I think. Seems obvious, but um, of course the end user product depends on a number of components like yeah. MySQL, DNS, and whatever. So what you're interested usually in is when MySQL breaks, you want a MySQL alert. So how do you get that? Maybe you answered that with your last sentence that said we keep Nagios after all, or is it that you no, grab that from the log events? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is really um, something I have in mind. Alerting for me is, is something I keep thinking of. And for now, uh, the simplest things I... I can do, and the most efficient was to alert on the end user problem, website down. But when, when it's like that, I always go to my Kibana and Grafana to try to find the reasons. It's kind of, uh, it's a work in progress, <laughs> in fact. But uh, I will reintroduce a lighting on CPU or something like that. But like I said, based on uh, Anomaly detection based on behavior, based on dynamic threshold. Well, for, I would have thought that's really a major drawback compared to traditional Nagios whatever setups that tell you my score is down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> One more question. Yeah, on, on only a, a warning or an information because with Elasticsearch is quite nice, but. Uh, you know that everybody who can read Kibana or can use Kibana can also drop your pe uh, your indexes. Yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Please I have a look. There is a project now to to avoid. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Have yeah. a look there. It's it's right. It's right that uh, security is not really my concern. <laughs> you know, it's community stuff. We, we want to kill our website <laughs> now, but. You're, you're right, you're right. Uh, product like Elasticsearch, you write by, write, uh, by calling an HTTP URL. So uh, security is uh, something you have to have in mind with some kind of code solution. I don't care about Yes, yes. 
Yes. You only have to know that. Yes, yes, yes. It's true. No more Any more time. questions? One more tool. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Now you have all these tools and they are quite new. How do you keep track of all the new versions and uh, don't, uh, and sometimes you have the problem, they break your uh, stuff with a newer version. How do you handle this? Uh, really easy. <laughs> <laughs> I put it in production and see. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of uh, my DevOps philosophy. <laughs> now, uh, I. I can do some things uh, on this infrastructure because it's community infrastructure, of course. And what I can tell you is uh, I never break something upgrading this system. And I upgrade it uh, often because there are a lot of moving parts, fast moving parts. And nothing breaks for the moment. Uh, I hope to continue like that. But uh, this is not a major concern in this context. In this context. In this context, but uh, it's uh, just a Debian package or DPKG E, and you see. <laughs> Anyone else? That's if you need like to it. contact me, I left you my Twitter and uh, email for questions around this subject. Don't hesitate. And thanks for listening. All right. Thank you for your presentation. <laughs>